Hey, all right, let me get this set up here. Praise God. What's up, Facebook Live? Uh, beautiful day here in uh, Columbus, Ohio. We'll get this thing going, get people connected into this and uh, see how this goes. Really, I think this this is my first time um, really doing this thing on, on Facebook Live. Uh, big, big shout out and thank you to, uh, to Tiffany uh, down in Cincinnati who told me, hey, Basso, you know, you may want to start doing some 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 Facebook live uh, type events, which is which is fine. I know I'm, I need to do some more Periscope. Um, I have a few out there and there's been a pretty big demand for doing that. But I, I, listen, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about all this craziness that's going on in the church. So uh, why don't you go ahead and share this with people. I want to talk a, a bit about it and just kind of hear what you all uh, have to think. There's just a huge controlling spirit that's operating in the church uh, and it's typically come through all this witchcraft that's being released from what a lot of people are calling the prophetic or the prophetic dimension, the prophetic ministry of the church. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But I'll tell you what, I've been I've been traveling now for the last oh, over three weeks, uh, going different parts of the nation. Uh, just finished up down in Cincinnati, had some great meetings uh, down there and doing deliverance. And I'll tell you what, people, there's so many hurting people out there. Believers are seriously bound. I mean, the amount of witchcraft that's being released uh, against people and the amount of witchcraft that's being released specifically within churches among leaders um, not necessarily in your ministry but uh, if you're a leader like me you're finding out that people are coming uh, into our ministries and they're there's like dramatically bound uh, they're they're bound by all this witchcraft all this control that's coming from other churches and then you as a leader you, you know you're you're stuck with this you, you have to deal with it because you love the people you want to see them uh, set free um, but I'll tell you what, as I probe and I talk to people and I'm finding out the amount of mess that has been released against people is just unbelievable. And, and perhaps you've experienced it yourself. Perhaps you're a leader and, and, and witchcraft has uh, uh, attacked uh, those that are coming into your, into your churches, into your ministries, and you're contending with this. It makes it real hard for you as a leader to work with people that have been bound by witchcraft from prior ministries, prior relationships. Uh, their parents, I mean, just all this rejection that exists, all this abuse that exists. Um, you know, we saw this, we saw this a lot down in Cincinnati as we were ministering and, and casting. We cast out so many demons. It was, it was unbelievable. And I want to thank you for your testimonies. Hey, y'all, I see y'all. And, and thank you for joining here today. Um, but we're getting a lot of tem testimonies of the great level of deliverance that people are experiencing. But I'll tell you what. You know it as well as I know that most of this stuff is not taking place from the world. Most of this stuff, most of this mess that people have, man, it's coming from the church. I mean, it's the people that are in the church. A hey, hey, bless you, uh, uh, Pastor Cedric. You know, it's it's people in the church that have been in another church, and they had this witchcraft released against them. They had these prophetic words that gas. It, that it basically it's a gaslighting type system. So you have somebody who's releasing a prophetic word, and what they end up doing is they pump them up. They get them up real high, and they say, Thus saith the Lord, the Lord's called you to the nations, the Lord has called you to be the head and the ruler over territories, and so on. And, and it's, it's called a push-pull type technique. And this is, it's satanic, it's demonic. It's, 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 it deals, it attacks the psyche, it attacks the mind. And then people get all excited, and what they do is because they've always wanted to be accepted, they they and they feel received by that person they connect to that person or they connect to that ministry or that organization and then they begin to follow that person they begin to really idolize that person putting them up real high and that but then when they begin to drift away uh, bless you bless you uh jose um what happens is they begin to drift away perhaps they say hey you know what i have a ministry i have something that the lord would have me to do i'm going to go out there i'm going to go to this uh meeting i'm going to go preach i'm going to go release prophetically i'm going to do something and then what happens is the controlling leader in that case or the i call it the controlling merchandiser the controlling uh prophetic sorcerer will begin to now attack that same person and begin to say no you can't do that you're out of order sit down here uh you you know they begin to quarantine these people and they become depressed they become angry they become bitter and they become a, they're, they're basically spiritually abused and then this occurs over time and over time and over time again i'm talking about years man in some cases people are sticking out in these ministries for you know 10 15 20 years these controlling ministries 
And what ends up happening is then when they finally do break away and they leave that ministry, they go to another ministry, it's hard for a genuine apostolic father or a leader or a pastor to really begin to minister to them because they have all these walls, they have all these blockades because they don't trust anymore. They feel that they've been abused, they've been rejected, and they have these walls, and you really can't get in. So what we're finding is there's just so much, God, God bless you, Apostle Taylor, there's just so much hurt and pain. And again, a lot of it is stemmed from the prophetic being released in an indiscriminate way. Now, what do you mean by indiscriminate, Apostle? In other words, listen, we all need the desire to prophesy, okay? But we're not in the Old Testament anymore. You don't need to have a prophet give you direction for your life to go somewhere. You don't need that. Now, it's okay for there to be a prophetic word released into your life that confirms what the Holy Spirit has already told you. But you don't need, you don't need, you're not going to be controlled by someone who claims, a self-proclaimed or self-acclaimed prophet that says, oh, let me speak the word in, in, into your life and now you follow that word in that word only. Let me tell you something. There is one word and that is the word of the Lord. And we need to follow the word of the, of the Lord. We need to follow the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 1, people, Hebrews chapter 1 says this says that God in the past, uh, prophetic is being released in an indiscriminate way. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and so the, what happens is in the word of God in Hebrews chapter one, it says that God in old times, in times past, yes, I, I see your testimony. Uh, uh, I see your, your testimony, Shante. It, God in times past spoke to us by the prophets, but in these days, in these last days, the last days occurring over 2,000 years ago, in these last days, God is speaking to us by his son. So the way God speaks to you is through his son. Now, that can be a prophetic word. I, I want to be real clear here. That can be a prophetic word. My point is, is that it does not have to be only a prophetic word. See, here's the thing. In the kingdom of God, listen to me very clearly. In the kingdom of God, you need to follow the word of the king before you follow the word of a man. Now, again, I'm not saying that people, hey, God bless you, Robert Anson. I see you I, and I appreciate your comments. God bless you. What what and, and please listen all of you start start to share this share this with people because I really want to talk to people about this stuff because I love the prophetic but we have some nonsense going on and it's controlling people and I'm as a deliverance minister I'm crossing this path and I'm finding out that so many people are bound by pe by people that are talking about you know I'm prophetic or I'm a prophet but really I'm telling you they're releasing words without permission and they're releasing prophetic witch uh, witchery uh, sorcery witchcraft uh, they're conjuring up words you know we're, we're we, we're, now we have meetings where we have people, they stand in the middle, it's like little Sally Saucer, and, and they stand in the middle and, and about 16 people get around and they spin them around with, a, with, a, with a, uh, a mask over their eyes or a blindfold over their eyes and wherever they stop, that person has to prophesy to them. Well, what if you don't have a word to prophesy to that, to that person? Do you just conjure up something and begin to prophesy to that person? Now, again, I believe that we should desire to prophesy. I believe we should not despise prophecy, but we should not be conjuring up words. And let me tell you something. You have people that are conjuring up words, and I'm, I get in these meetings, and I see this nonsense. And as a, as a deliverance minister, as one that is looking to set people free, it is really getting under my, my spiritual skin, if I want to call it that. And I'm telling you, I'm going to call it out when I see it. So if I see these, this witchcraft in operation, in meetings that I'm in, oh, believe me, I'm going to call you out. I don't care what your name is. I don't care what your title is. I don't care who you're associated with. I don't care if you have a Dracula uh, uh, cross uh, on your neck, and I don't care if you have a backwards collar. At the end of the day, I'm going to call this thing out. I'm going to call out all the perversion that you're operating in because that's what it is. It's perverted words. We're not supposed to prophesy just because we can. We're supposed to release prophetic sorcery and prophetic witchcraft and prophetic acupuncture against people. We're not supposed to puncture people's lives. Do you hear me what I'm saying? We're supposed to release words that are edifying, ex exhorting, uh, uh, comforting people, lifting up. That's the New Testament model. We need to get out of the Old Testament. Okay, prophets don't have some type of special thing where they speak into your life and only they can speak into your life. No, it's the word of the Lord that speaks into your life. God said he sent his word and delivered the people. It's the word of God. It's the word of the king. And we need to be more kingdom minded rather than being religious minded because when we're religious minded, we get in all these little different Houdini acts, these high wire uh, uh, circus acts that are taking place in the church where people are now gravitating as, as groupies and fans run into these little dumb, stupid meetings, these little cliques where people are out there in 
just releasing this witchcraft and it's messing up people's lives. Now, if you have a word from the Lord, release that word from the Lord. And before you release from the, the word from the Lord, can I talk to you for just a minute? Can I talk to you for just a minute? Is it okay if I talk to you? Because I'm gonna tell you something. God bless all of you. I see all your comments. God bless you. I'm gonna tell you something. When a word is released to you, ask this question. Number one, to whoever's releasing it to you, are you saved? Are you saved? Are you born again? Number two, uh, d d d have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? Number three, do you understand the kingdom of God? Because if you don't understand the kingdom of God, then I'm gonna tell you something. That person should not be releasing something from God, from the king, to you. Because if it's not kingdom related, if it's not kingdom focused, and if it's not seeking the kingdom and pushing you towards the kingdom, then you don't need to hear it. What, what is this nonsense we got going on? Folks prophesying, talking about uh, 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 spinning you around in a circle, and then all of a sudden you land on, on, on a person and, and they say, well, God is telling me that I see that you're getting ready to get married. And the person's already married. What type of nonsense is this? And everybody just High five your neighbor, slapping everybody. Oh, girl, that was good. Oh, that's all wonderful. And, 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 and it's anointed from God. That is an anointed from God. That is from the underworld. That is from the kingdom of darkness. And that stuff needs to be called out right then, right there. And I'm telling you, uh, listen, I'm telling you, if I see it, because I'm, 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 I'm casting these demons out of believers, I'm casting these demons out of leaders everywhere. It needs to stop. Stop controlling the people. Stop manipulating the people. Stop merchandising the people. I, I, I declare, if I'm at a meeting and I see a thousand dollar, a five hundred dollar, or a hundred dollar line, and and and, and come up here, and, and I'm gonna bless your special seed. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna get rid of that mess. I'm gonna call it out. I'm gonna rebuke you. Okay, I'm going to rebuke you publicly and we're going to deal with that stuff because this is the only way that we're going to get the church of the living God free. This is the only way we're going to get people free from all this prophetic sorcery and witchcraft that's being released. Many people are getting involved in this and, mo and listen, most of them are good, they're legit and I know them and I'm fine with that. I don't, I'm, that's not what I'm talking to. I'm talking about these self-proclaimed, self-acclaimed prophets, the ones on Facebook that are under no authority, they're under they're under nothing, they don't understand the kingdom, they have not, they're accountable to to nobody. Nobody can speak into their life. They say they have a word from God. They hear from God alone and nobody else. You, they need to sit down. They need to be called out. They're merchandising. They're using the prophetic as some type of cash cow system to generate sales for books, to generate sales and offerings and all that stuff. And, and, what, and what's worse is because of people being so hurt, what ends up happening is these people are flocking because they want the truth. And then these prophetic merchandisers come in and they're hoodwinking the people. They're putting, Jezebel's putting their fangs deep into these people and sucking them dry from their money, sucking them dry for their emotions. It's creating, it, what it ends up doing, again, it's gaslighting and it creates spiritual abuse in a person by, by uh, push-pull. In other words, I'm for you, but I'm against you. I'm for you as long as you're doing what I tell you to do. I'm for you as long as you're promoting me on Facebook. I'm for you as long as you're promoting me on Periscope. But the moment you say something opposed to what I'm doing, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to I'm going to talk about you. I'm going to slander you. I'm going to attack you. I'm going to I'm going to set you down. You're not going to move. I don't care if you have a word, you're not going to speak it. I'm telling you, all this nonsense in the church, it's got to go. And and see, I, listen, can can I just can Robert just talk to you for real for real? I didn't grow up in the church, and I'm glad because this nonsense that I see, it, the denomination stuff is insane. 30,000 denominations within Christianity alone. The, some of these things are cults. I don't want to call them out by name, but I could tell you, I could I could put the acronym out there right now, and everybody would want to just go crazy because you know it's the truth. They're, they're cults. There's witches. There are warlocks. There's the homosexuals that are ruling over these principalities. These ain't denominations. These are principalities of Jezebel. These are principality systems. Systems, and I'm telling you, there's perversion in them, there's homosexuality, there's lesbianism in there, there, there there's poli the, the, the political spirit has got in there. And listen, you and I both know this stuff has got to go. And I'm telling you, when you see it, you have to expose it. Don't, 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 don't let them say this nonsense. Well, well, you, uh, uh, you're not in position to say something. You're not a leader. You, 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 you know, you, you need to, you need to be quiet. You need to submit to authority. Listen. Oh, or they use this scripture all the time. Touch my, not my anointed, to do my prophets no harm. Listen. That word, touch my anointed, that means you. Yeah, they shouldn't be touching you. They should be laying that false prophetic word on you, dropping that bomb on you, putting all their mess on you. They, they're just trying to uh, work. Their 
their craft on you so they, they can get a bunch more testimonies and say to, uh, tell people how many they prophesied to and all that nonsense. No, you tell them, yeah, that's right. Get your mouth off me. If they don't have something good to say about you, then you know what? It's time for you to just lose it. It's time for you to shake the dust off your feet. That's what you need to do. Just look at my feet. See, shake the dust, shake the dust, shake the dust, shake the dust right off your feet. Get that, get that dust off your feet. Run from those places. Don't go into these, these, these witchcraft covens where they're, where they're conjuring up uh, uh, all, all of this, this, this prophetic witchcraft against people. You need to break that stuff. Break it off you. It's a false anointing. It's a false Holy Spirit. It's false tongues. It's false prophetic. Get rid of that. Again, there is a true prophetic. There is a true Holy Spirit. But it's time for the people of God to watch it. And when you see it, the Bible says, mark those. Mark it. Mark it. That means put it under observation. Put it under a microscope. Watch it. Keep an eye on it. Don't let it run wild. Begin to, to begin to, to deal with it. Because I'm telling you, this, this gaslighting uh, in the prophetic realm, what it'll end up doing, it It'll, it'll push you out in the moment you try to get out on your own. It'll slander you. It'll accuse you. It'll reject you. And it'll have you run into a cave. You'll run into a cave so far. And, and that's, a, that's another thing. I'm tired of all the prophets that are running into caves. Listen, you got to come out the cave because you think you're alone in that cave. You think that uh, you're going to be hiding in that cave. You think you're going to be okay in that cave. But I got news for you. Listen to me real clearly. You ain't alone in that cave. There's demons in that cave. I'll say it again. Yes, Apostle Summer said it. There's demons in that cave. Get out the cave. I'm constantly pulling. I love prophets. I'm constantly pulling them out of the cave because of the past hurt and the past abuse. But I'm telling you, you're going to have to be careful in connecting with these sorcerers and these wizards. Watch out. It's in the church. It, it, in the, can I be real, real? It's in the apostolic and prophetic church. Oh, yeah, buddy. It's in the apostolic and prophetic church. And if we're not careful, we will turn the apostolic and the prophetic dimension of the church, which I love, into nothing more than a denomination. It's time, people of God. It's time to rise up and, be, and, and begin to focus in on the kingdom. Lose all this religious protocol. You don't have to put your finger up when you leave the church. You don't have to do whatever. All this protocol, we need to throw all this nonsense out. Okay? Find yourself a good equipping center. Find yourself where you can release the gift that God's given you. And there's more than nine gifts of the Spirit. You hear me? There's no more than nine gifts of the Spirit. And everybody should be used. Everybody should be used. I, I'm, I'm telling you all, I want to prophesy to you right now. In the name of Jesus, God is saying that you're about to be used. You're about to move into a higher level, a higher dimension. God is beginning to shift some things. He's getting ready to challenge you. God is even challenging you now and putting you in a place where even you may feel a little bit uncomfortable. But God is saying, don't be weary. Don't, 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 don't try to faint. Don't, don't walk off from the, the, the challenge. Begin to accept the challenge. Begin to embrace the challenge. And God is going to put you to a higher place. He's going to take you from the valley. He's going to put you on the mountaintop. He's going to put you. He, he, God is calling you great. He's putting you before great men. He's putting you before great people. And nothing long, no longer shall witchcraft, manipulation, control, hoodwinking bishops, uh, hoodwinking apostles, uh, false prophets, every negative word that's been spoken against you in the name of Jesus. I, I cancel that assignment out right now in Jesus' name. You will be who God called you to be. You will be that great person. You will start a business. You will start a ministry. You will go out and preach. You don't you, you listen, you don't need to get permission to live. I take authority over that controlling demon that has you to try to get permission to live. You can live. You're free. I'm telling you right now, you're free. You're free from religion. You're free from tradition. You're free from racism. It's time to break out. Listen, now that the demons left, you got to let go of them. Let go of that. Let go. Of, I take authority over soul ties with bishops, soul, soul ties with apostles, soul ties with networks, soul ties with systems. I rebuke it now in Jesus' name. I command every fetter, every chain, every, every henchman, every assassinating demon that has looked to take you out of your destiny in the name of Jesus. I take authority over that and I break that now in Jesus name. So listen, you get out there, you let people know that Apostle Summers, he ain't playing. I'm locked and loaded. I don't play. I don't play. I don't play. And I'm tired of it. I've sat back. I've watched it. I'm going to get on Periscope. I'm going to get on, what am I on? Facebook, uh, YouTube live, whatever, Facebook live. I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to get out there and I'm going to bam this thing. I'm going to hit this thing and you're either going to like it or you're going to run. And if you run, then everybody's going to see your tail running. So you want to tuck tail and run? tuck tail and run. But if you want to get free, those of us that are spiritual, we're going to rest we're going to restore those that have been overtaken to fault. That means you're going to get the false prophets free. Oh yeah, there's false prophets that are operating pro uh, prophetically and they don't even know that they're false, but you're going to get them free. That's right. So fired up people of God. Make an explosion. Make some noise out there. Go out there. Challenge everybody you see. Let the kingdom of God that is in you rise up against every false and evil word that's being spoken and let's root this witchcraft out of the church. Amen. Glory to God. 
I'm telling you. I, I, I mean, I'm hoarse right now. I've been casting out demons for the last three weeks. Cast, taking, pulling down strongholds, all this perversion in the church. We got all this, 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 this church culture stuff that we have. We need to, we don't have a, why do we have a church culture? Why do you even go to church? You are the church. We got a church culture. We need a kingdom culture. It's about the kingdom. It's about God's government. And today we take the government of God and we release it every place we go. Amen. Well, listen, I, I love you. God bless you. I see all your comments. Amen. God bless you. I'm, I'm glad I'm helping you. Uh, thank you. Send your testimonies. You can hit me up on Facebook. If you want to text me, hey, 614-378-1534. Again, 614-378-1534. We're here to help you. We're here to help you. 614-378-1534. Hit me up on Facebook. You know, you may say, well, isn't that a lot for an apostle to take? Yeah, but you know what? I'm not like these other goons out there. I'm not like these goons out there that they want to uh, talk to you or have a relationship from afar. Listen, if we're brothers and sisters in the Lord, yeah, you can. And by the way, you can call me Robert, okay? I know you respect me. That's cool. We're good with that. But I'm Robert, okay? We don't need all this title stuff and whatever. You know what? I'm Robert. You need some help. You need Jezebel out of your life? Hit me up. You need to get demons cast out of your life? Hit me up. You need to know what to do? Hit me up. Amen? God bless you. I'm a for real, for real apostolic father. I don't play the game. Amen? So I love you guys, all right? Keep your testimony com coming. Go to my website, www.summersministries.com. Check out what we're doing. Coming to a lot of cities. Coming to Atlanta. Coming, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, hey Pastor Stallworth, God bless you down there in Florida. Love you, man. Uh, we're coming to Atlanta. I'm going to tell you the cities we're coming to. Atlanta, Georgia. We're coming to uh, uh, New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire. We're coming to New York, New York. We're coming to Long Island, New York. We're coming to, again, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we're to Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, Chicago. We're coming to Chicago. Chicago has a religious stronghold. we got to get them free. Uh, we're coming to Chicago. Uh, we'll be in, of course, we have Columbus. We have Apostle John Eckhart coming here for uh, the prophetic activation on June 16th through 18th. It's going to be a phenomenal time um, and anyways just go to my website you'll find out where else I'm coming if you want me to come to your city listen I, man hey Robert I'd love to come to Montana man I want to come to Montana I listen I'm a country I'm, I'm from Chicago originally but I'm a country boy at heart and I will take my I will take my my, my, my Chevy pickup truck I'll take my RV and I'll come out your way and I'll plant it there for a few weeks man we can have revival we can get out there minister we can root that root out Jezebel and do deliverance ministry if you need me to come to your region listen I don't charge I, I tell it I don't sell it. You don't have to pay me to come. I don't believe in that. Uh, just, just, just pay for my transportation. Pay for a hotel room. Get me there. Uh, whatever you give me is good. I'm good with that. Everybody that knows me, you know I keep it real. Amen. And and I will just uh, come there to release what God has given me. Amen. That's my assignment in life. i uh, love to come to Louisiana. i love to come to Florida. Louisiana, I love you. Detroit, we're coming. Yes, forgot to say Detroit. Oh my God, we're coming to Detroit. I believe we're coming up there in October. We're doing a deliverance roundtable. We're teaching and, te teaching and preaching deliverance. And we're teaching people... Not the spooky and weird deliverance. We're teaching people how to get demons cast out, but also how to renew their minds so they can have lasting deliverance. Amen. That's the missing piece. Uh, Arizona. Hey, my son's out there in Arizona. He's a, he's a police officer out there in uh, Lake Havasu. Would love to come out to Arizona. Bakersfield, man. California. Look, at, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to go get my RV. We'll pop it on the back of my pickup truck. I'll just, I will, can we just, we'll just take, uh, we'll just take the highway and go out there. We'll stop at every city. We'll preach. Let me know. Help me out. Okay, go to my website. Listen, it doesn't take much. We can do this thing. Let's get this radical message out there. Little Rock, love to see you. Bahamas, hey, I'm there. Uh, I was able to spend a lot of time with uh, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe right before he passed. He imparted my life, and he said, what's in me, I impart in you. He imparted the kingdom in me, and I'm excited about coming to the Bahamas. Amen. Glory to God. So, uh, yes, Georgia will be down there in Atlanta. Philipp Philippines will be there. California will be there, man. I love you guys. Uh, please share this, okay? Let's get this out. Stay connected. Love you guys, man. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome, and don't let anyone listen. Don't let anybody tell you different. I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's some religious pastor. You are blessed. Amen. All right, I got to go because you can stay on this thing all day. All right, God God bless you all. Love you, man. Hugs and kisses to all you guys. All right, my wife loves you. Yeah, there we go. Let's come on. Come on, <laughs> give me some love. <laughs> Thank you for all the love. I appreciate it. God bless you guys. All right.